Thank you, Brooke. And thank you, Yvonne, for that wonderful, as always, wonderful welcome to country. And I, too, begin by paying my respects to the traditional custodians of this land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging, because the emerging leaders are our future. We put our faith in the children. And I also acknowledge the many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander guests who are joining us today. It is a great privilege for me as president of the Australian Human Rights Commission to welcome each and every one of you today's, to today's event. We've now reached the milestone of 32 years since the awards began. Joining us in the room, we have commissioners, past and present. We have royal commissioners. We have judges, we have friends, family, and our finalists. And if I can borrow a word from Yvonne, she spoke of warriors. Well, our finalists are our warriors. And today is your day. Some of our finalists have overcome adversity or taken a stand in face of prejudice. Others have exposed harmful practices Others still have led enduring change. All have strived for fairer and more inclusive communities. You have achieved remarkable things and we salute you. We live in a world that is rapidly changing. New technologies offer previously unimaginable benefits to society and unprecedented challenges. The robo-debt scandal revealed how easily the most vulnerable members of our society can be harmed by new technologies. And we are all alarmed that algorithms allow the manipulation of social media audiences to the benefit of the platform and those who seek to undermine our democracy. And we live in uncertain, even disturbing times. The April attacks on mosques in Christchurch were shocking examples of extremism and anti-Muslim sentiment. But they also generated an outpouring of compassion. Extraordinary police raids on journalists and the significant public back backlash demonstrated both the fragility and the preciousness of freedom of the press and the public's right to know. But such issues pull at the seams of a cohesive society. But on days like today, even when we feel the challenges are great, we should remember that what is common to our humanity is even greater. Surely, compassion is central to our national identity. Respect and dignity, similarly so. We do expect that everyone will get a fair go and that we can all have our say. And Australians like to keep the bastards honest, as Don Chip famously said, by ensuring that people in authority are accountable for their actions. These are values that we hold dear as a nation. And they are, in essence, a reflection of human rights standards and democratic freedoms. At last year's awards, I announced that we would embark upon a national conversation on human rights to reimagine how we value and respect human rights, asking what kind of Australia do we want to live in? During the year, we set out our approach in an issues paper and three discussion papers, looking at how our discrimination laws could be made more effective and what protections are missing, what domestic mechanisms are needed to ensure accountability for our human rights commitments to the world, and how to build a positive framing of human rights in law, policy, and practice. A significant highlight of the year, as Brooke mentioned, was our free and equal conference in Sydney in October, 
with a visit to Australia of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Dr. Michelle Bachelet. The conference and the roundtables we hosted during her visit were an opportunity to focus on a shared vision for human rights reform into the future. And as Dr. Bachelet urged, we should apply strategic optimism to reach our goals. Through our conversations, we have learned that Australians do value their rights to freedom of expression, to a fair trial, to equality before the law, and to freedom from discrimination. These are all values that we hold dear as Australians. And yet, we have not effectively embedded them into our laws and practices, especially at the Commonwealth level. Our conversations have also prompted questions for our politicians. Do they protect our rights? Do they restrict them? And if so, how do they justify this to us, the electors? We are talking about human rights and freedoms in a forward future building way with strategic optimism, where our focus is aspirational and positive. There is encouraging work taking place in front of us, on our TV screens and on Twitter feeds, in protests and vigils, through the work of inquiries and roundtables, and by people working late into the night, gathering evidence and crafting reports and recommendations for change. The issues involved are far-ranging, the environment, regional inequality, racism, deaths in custody, and demands that more be done to counter historical injustices, to break cycles of intergenerational trauma. We will focus on some of these themes next year. How to counter the rising tide of online hate speech and extremism, the environment and human rights, water, food, clean air, and the sustainability of regional Australia. Democracy. People and communities are entitled to speak up for what they believe in and to congregate in public spaces to express their views, to hold those responsible to account and call out injustice where they see it. Our democracy is precious. We want to see people engaged in civic life, not silenced. It is frightening to see that the annual Civicus Monitor, which assesses how well freedoms are protected, has downgraded Australia from open to a country where civil space has contracted citing new laws that restrict peaceful assembly, expand government surveillance, and allow ra raids on media organisations. These issues are all connected. But I have faith in human rights to help us solve problems and a belief in our shared humanity, the essential goodness in each of us. Most of all, I see in the actions of our young people, our young warriors, in their dedication to this nation and the planet, a better future for us all. Next year, we will bring our project to fruition, not a close. We will release a national reform agenda and seek public comment before finalising it in a report to the federal parliament in the second half of 2020. Human rights matter. A society that values human rights is a society that values its people. And a society that values its people is worth fighting for. So let us celebrate the achievements of the year in our Human Rights Awards 2019 and draw on the inspiring actions and examples of our finalists so that tomorrow 
we may continue to turn our aspirations and hopes into reality.